Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I am back today with kind of like a little chit chat video. I've been home from work since 4 p.m. Uh, tonight's actually the Star Wars premiere for the new Star Wars movie and I'm still thinking about going. I, I'm just an old ass person, guys. I'm 27 years old and I swear to God, I've got the fucking sleeping patterns of a 90 year old. Like I just, I love sleep. I love to sleep. I love being asleep. I just love the way sleeping makes me feel or not feel actually. And I just look forward to just climbing into my big ass bed back there and just cuddling into my sheets with my little nugget dog who was probably back there creeping and living my best life in bed. You know, that just, that's what makes me happy. Oh, there's a little nugget girl. Say hi. No. Hey. Hi. Oh, my little nugget girl. She's coming. She needs your attention. I don't have anything to do the next uh, three days. So for that, I am like super thankful. I took tomorrow off just because I had an appointment at 9.50 in the morning. And I knew for a fact that I just, I, this this appointment I'm kind of like worried about. It's my checkup on my PCOS. Those of you who have been on my channel for the past few months know that I've been dealing with PCOS. And it's been a pain in the ass, but I'm actually kind of happy because the past four months, I've had a regular cycle that has arrived on time each month. So I'm very excited about that. So we're gonna get a checkup and see if anything is improving. Um, we're gonna see if there's anything I can do as far as like potentially getting pregnant soon. I don't know what's gonna happen. I am nervous, but I just don't wanna focus on that. I wanna leave that till tomorrow and then I'll worry about it then. For tonight, I wanna relax and just hang out with you guys and talk about the drama. So let's just get into that actually. So I have to tell you right now, guys, if I'm cheering for anybody against those two, it's going to be Rich because I feel like he has a lot more going for him. He's a lot better as far as quality of content and he's a better person than Karina is. And that's the reason why I find it so hard to believe that he's even close to Karina and John, but it is what it is. I mean, the facts are there. Now, Peter was talking about uh, the fact that he thinks it's weird that both Rich and Karina have been completely silent when it comes to the John Cookie and release, even though it's been one of the huge drama situations we've had in the drama community for a very long time, just because it's John Cookie and not to mention the entire launch was a complete fucking failure. The reason I think Rich's channel does so much better than Karina's is because number one, he has the balls to sit and deal with the haters that he has on his channel. If he has any, I don't think I've really ever seen anybody hate on Rich Lux. I'm pretty sure. Sure. The majority of his comments are mainly positive. Now, whether that's, you know, enforced by him, I have no idea. I really don't look into that kind of shit, nor do I give a fuck. But I'm just saying it's a hell of a lot better than the Karina option when she deletes all comments and disables comments. Because why the fuck wouldn't you be allowed to have an opinion on her channel? Like, it, it just, it pisses me off that that's her mindset. The only opinion that matters to Karina is Karina's, and that's it. Like, everyone else is wrong. Like the entire launch itself thus far and how it's been handled by Cookie and, and his team is it just doesn't make any sense to me because apparently he had promised everybody who had bought tickets to the launch party that they would get a full refund and that he would also personally send them a thousand dollars worth of makeup, which I I don't understand where the thousand dollars worth of makeup comes from because what makeup would that be? His entire line, as in a total, as of where it stands right now, is maybe 130 as far as like a total for everything. But where is he going to get this thousand dollars worth of makeup to give everybody who bought tickets to his launch party that didn't even happen? There's so many inconsistencies and he has contradicted himself so many times. Like he's told on himself so many times that it's so hard to believe anything that comes out of this fucking kid's mouth. You know what I mean? It's not like Rich and Karina wouldn't be able to find any evidence against the kid because I swear to God, this kid literally sticks his own foot in his own mouth every time he opens his mouth on Snapchat, Twitter, wherever the fuck he is. Yet these two have chosen to remain completely silent on it, even though they have something to say about everything, and I mean literally everything. 
I don't know what I was expecting Karina to do because Karina, number one, is a chicken shit. And uh, she can dish it, but she can't take it, which is exactly why she has no comments enabled on her channel. She doesn't like confrontation. She doesn't like being confronted for her actions, but she has absolutely no problem confronting other people for their actions. I think I was expecting a lot more from Rich just because it's Rich and his subscribers have been actively asking him to do a review of the eyeshadows now. He sees the comments. He knows what they want to see. The other reason why I know for a fact you won't see a review of Cookie and Cosmetics by Karina Kaboom is because that would take away precious moments from her war path against Manny Amue. Now, I say this completely in a very serious tone. This woman is beyond obsessed with him. This is an infatuation at this point. It is very creepy. It is eerie as fuck. And quite frankly, I feel very scared for Manny at this point. If you don't believe me, that's fine, but I'm gonna roll a few clips and you can see for yourself. I mean, Peter Mon had mentioned in his video that uh, Karina had made 76 or 78 videos about Jeffree Star, but I promise you, if you were to count the amount of videos that she has made about Manny Mue, I can almost guarantee you that the videos that she makes about Jeffree Star, as far as numbers, would pale in comparison to the numbers that she has for Manny Mue videos on her channel. I promise you that. We're talking about Manny MUA not wishing Jeffree Star a happy birthday. How could they do this to my Uncle Jeffrey? Uncle Jeffrey, don't worry about it. I'm going to handle this. We're also going to be discussing Manny MUA complaining that he doesn't make any money on YouTube, not as much as he used to. Manny, I I'm starting to like you just a little bit. Like with all this craziness, no, no, that was a passing moment. I still don't like you. There is a very severe problem going on with Manny MUA and Uncle Jeffrey Star. So today we are going to be talking about why Manny Mue is a horrible friend to Jeffree Star. Also, I'm going to be exposing Manny today. Uncle Jeffree, Jeffree Star, is just about ready to pop with good old garbage person Manny Mue. Today we're talking about Manny Mue. So today's bedtime story is all about Manny Mue. Hi guys! Who likes my lipstick today? Not Manny M.U.A. <laughs> oh well, today is a great day, a fine day, a wonderful day. Jeffree Star, Uncle Jeffrey, who I love, has got on Snapchat and exposed Manny. He didn't say his name, but by the time that I'm done with this video, you will see that Jeffree Star is basically exposing Manny M.U.A. on Snapchat. Now keep in mind that uh, Manny MUA is the exact person that Karina says ruined her entire life. However, Karina has absolutely no issue stalking his entire life all over social media when it comes to Snapchat, Twitter. I mean, I'm fairly certain this bitch has him tagged everywhere just in case anything comes up. He gets notified immediately. And it just, it's so creepy to me. You know what I mean? Like, it just, ugh. And that's ultimately why she won't be making comments about Cookie In is because she's on a warpath to destroy fucking Manny right now. She doesn't give a fuck about Cookie In. And you want to know why else I know for a fact Karina won't rock the boat with John Cookie In? It's because her and John have this little thing going where they kind of just give each other inspiration for videos and give each other all the receipts they need. I'm willing to bet money that that big inside source that John Cookie In and Karina Kaboom always brag about is Lisa Blandino, who is Jerry Blandino, the creative director for Too Faced. It's his sister who happens to be obsessed with John Cookian. I am willing to bet money that she is the inside source these two get all their news and drama receipts from. You know what I mean? She has a lady boner the size of the Empire State Building for Cookie Ann, and whoever is friends with Cookie Ann is automatically good with her. 
But yeah, that's my tea on that, uh, that fuckery. The next thing I want to talk about going back to Jeffree Star is his big rant about Kylie Cosmetics releasing a brush set for $360. Now I can tell you right now the world is not very happy with Kylie because obviously I mean this brush set is fucking ridiculous. For that price tag girl, for that cheap of quality, I don't fucking think so. It pissed off a lot of people to see this girl literally releasing such a cheap set of brushes. I mean, if you watched Manny MUA's video, if you watched Jeffree Star's video, if you watched anyone's video, you would see that the quality of the actual packaging and the brushes themselves is very, very low quality for that high of a price tag. People have been reading her to absolute filth, including Jeffree Star, which I have that rant clip right here. But um, in other news, I have seen all of the Kylie launches coming up and all the new products. And girl, I have an opinion. So the whole makeup community is talking about the price of Kylie Cosmetics. Brand new brushes coming out. I think they launch in a few days. Um, now I saw online that they were over $360, I'm sure, plus shipping. Um, for an entire brush set and a little brush roll and I was fucking shook. Anyone else? I'm like, girl, I could drive to the Morphe store and get a whole collection for at least 150 bucks. I can get a BH Cosmetics brush set for way cheaper. Um, but of course, it's all about the brand and the formula and how the brushes are made and the quality. So, um, I'm not going to be too severe. But girl, that price point? Mm. So, of course, you know I had to chime in, and because it's me, I'm not allowed to say anything, I guess. But, girl, fucking relax. Um, $360 for the average person for a brush set? Girl, you got the wrong one, especially when you're an e-commerce brand and not everyone can feel and touch it and, like, really get the real tea. Um, and I think I saw a lot of people upset that when she showed the brush set, they look a little mangled. Maybe they had been cleaned recently. Maybe they had been like through the fucking ringer. Maybe they used that brush cleaner that me and Laura reviewed. Girl, I don't fucking know, but um, if you're gonna present that price point of a brush set, you better fucking have them looking pristine. Unfortunately, like I've said about everything else as far as the value of a product, as long as there is a market, there's going to be a buyer and vice versa. So that just makes the product worth the money if someone's obviously buying the product. And you will be amazed at how many people will actually shell out $360 just because the product has the name Kylie on it. It's fucking insane. I also wanted to give a quick shout out to both BH Cosmetics and Wet n Wild for throwing the classiest of shades towards Kylie Cosmetics. It was so tasteful and it made sense and it was fucking hilarious and it was fucking savage. Look at these. Now to add insults to injury, Jeffree Star is once again dragging Kylie Cosmetics because her concealers, her new concealers, have the exact same packaging as his liquid lipsticks, which if you don't know what they look like, they look like this. Now I have to say, I, I agree with Jeffree when it comes to the review of those brushes. I watched his video and I was like, yes, girl, read her to filth because quite frankly, she did deserve it. She needed to get humbled a little bit and I'm pretty sure with all these reviews going around by all these influencers putting her in her place, I'm pretty sure she's hashtag humbled. However, I really have to say I cannot agree with Jeffrey calling her out for stealing or using a product that looks similar or that is similar to his packaging. When John Cookian stole your product verbatim down to the fucking shade name. Dirty Money is a gorgeous green shade that I came out with. I had no idea the controversy the shade would make and I'm discontinuing it. I had absolutely no idea in my mind there was another person that had a shade called Dirty Money that was also a green <laughs> Dirty Money is a really, really popular phrase in rap music, which is what I listen to. You've heard me in my car singing along to Nicki Minaj all the time. I don't follow other people's collections unless I really respect them and I really like them. There's certain people that I would keep an eye on. I went all the way over to the UK and me and Manny and Patrick all went to London. A lot of you were telling me about this. I was fully aware he was in London. I have eyes all over the city. <laughs> but in terms of people for scandals, if someone has 101 different shades of liquid lipstick, 
I don't keep up with them. I was fully aware he was in London. Add to this that I've tried this liquid lipstick on at least six of my friends during the process of bringing them out and trying them. Not a single one of them has ever said that they've heard that before. They've all said that they love the name. Not a single person has ever said to me, well, I know another brand that has that name. You shouldn't do that. Not, no one knows about this other brand in England and I certainly didn't know about it. This is Dirty Money. Dirty Money by Jeffree Star. It's not something that I've really seen a lot of in the past. The next shade we're gonna be swatching is a new limited edition one that currently doesn't have a release date. I'm just gonna surprise everybody. Um, and this one is called Dirty Money. It's a very unique color. Nowadays with so many brands out there, it's hard to make colors that has been, you know, that hasn't already been done before. Yeah. And I think this is pretty unique. But the thing with this shade is I've given it a really olive undertone, so it actually just look pretty on skin and not just very alien. All right, if you want to see how I created this alien sex doll look, then keep on watching. Now, a lot of people are like, okay, Jeffrey, you said this was like your version of a neutral palette. Yeah, the top row is neutral, baby. And then this is the Jeffrey version of neutral, which is very alien. And this is the Jeffrey version of neutral, which is very. So last but not least, I saw the Kylie Cosmetics concealers. And yes, they are in the exact same packaging as my liquid lips. Um, and I think a lot of people are on the fence of how they feel most of you get it i'm like girl i'm not throwing shade like i'm not mad girl i'm making my money she's making her money but when you're that big and you've and you've made that much fucking money why couldn't you just use another bottle girl are you are you that was my only question on twitter today was if you're gonna go you know in the news and on the press and say that your brand is about to be a one billion dollar company next year then use some original packaging do some custom shit, girl. What the fuck? But um, I ain't mad at it. Girl, my liquid lips are selling like fucking crack. Um, and I'm not mad. You know, I'm still going to review it. That's the thing. People think I'm like angry about it. I'm just asking questions, girl. When you're that far in the motherfucking game, why not use a different packaging? Why? Don't know. But I'm still going to review the formula on my channel because I'm that boss of a bitch and I don't give a fuck. So I leave you guys with a few questions today. What do you think about the packaging? Um, do you think it looks like mine? Well, first of all, it is literally the exact same bottle, so there's no questions there. But what do you think about it personally? I can't sit here and defend Jeffrey for going after Kylie about the packaging of her concealers being the same as his liquid lipsticks because, like I said, John Cookian is sitting over there in England in the UK giggling to himself, like touching his titties and nasty shit over the fact that he pulled a quick one on Jeffrey Star because not only did he steal the shade name, he stole the entire shade. Homegirl doesn't deserve it. It's fucking packaging. Please tell me this. Has Jeffrey ever called out Wet n Wild for having the exact same packaging that he does? The only difference is their top is all black. It's like a shiny black. His is metallic. I mean, come on. Pick your battles. Pick your battles. If you're gonna call out one person, call it everybody. Now to make matters even worse for Kylie, this girl can't get a damn break to save her life. <laughs> Kylie is now being also read for all of a sudden now coming out with an inclusive line of skin tone shades for anybody to use. which I think, quite frankly, is fucking stupid. I can tell you right now, when I used to do work in Florida, Florida itself is a melting pot in and of itself. There are people with so many different skin tones, like medium skin tones, dark as fuck skin tones, light as fuck skin tones, like every tone in between. So with that being said, I worked on a lot of different people with different skin tones, and the one issue I continuously came across was the fact that I could never go to the drugstore and save money on products when I came to doing specific skin tone shades because I could never find the exact skin tone 
tone shade I would need available in store for like certain foundations, concealers, and it wasn't even certain ones. It was across every makeup line. This has been an issue, an ongoing issue I should say for that matter, that has been going on for as long as makeup has been around. I mean, there is, there's always been a desperate need for a wider skin tone range as far as concealers and foundations, etc, etc. I have to be honest guys, I think it is so stupid watching people drag Kylie for doing something that people have been fighting for and challenging brands to do for how long? And now you're gonna drag this girl for finally doing what you guys have been asking for brands to do for the longest time? Like, what do you want? Pick a side. Either you want brands to be more inclusive across all skin tones, whether you have the whitest of white skin or the darkest of dark skin, or you want them to just not have any of the choices and you just want to keep, you know, comparing them to Fenty Beauty. Listen, Fenty Beauty is not the end-all be-all. Yes, I will admit that she recently has been one of the only brands who has really produced a very inclusive line of product, but... I, I mean, why attack people for doing the exact same thing when all you've been fighting for is for brands to acknowledge that we need more of that? And then finally, I wanted to touch on the situation concerning the Sephora employee. I thought it was a really good idea, you silly bitch. To steal confidential information from work at Sephora and blurt it on Twitter about a very high profile customer from Sephora, who of course you guys know is Jeffree Star, and she shared it to the world because somehow that's a fucking good idea, right? People are on the fence about how they feel about the entire thing. I myself think she deserves everything she's gotten so far. But you know who else is involved that I cannot wait to see the downfall of is here for the tea because she knew about it. This girl legitimately sent her screenshots. I'm sorry, this girl deserves everything coming to her. Everything she's gotten so far, being kicked off of Twitter, being fired, if that even happened. She deserves all of it because you don't do that shit. That's so unprofessional. Not to mention you wouldn't fucking like it if your shit was posted onto the fucking world to see. So why the fuck would you do it to somebody else? Like that's so fucking stupid. It's here for the tea. Sam, you guys know I don't really like the girl. I, I don't think she is worth anyone's time because people are calling her out for being the snake that she is. And trust me, I'm fucking here for it because it's been a long time coming because you are a very rude person. You're a fucking shady ass bitch. You're a snake. And quite frankly, you're as two-faced as they come. You know what I mean? Because before when she was BFS with John Cookie and she was attacking all these brands, the same brands, by the way, that she is now, you know, being sweet to and talking to and getting all these exclusive interviews from all these influencers too. Holy shit, she dragged people to fucking filth. But all these same people are now in her little clout bubble, you know what I mean? She gets all those exclusive, like, interviews and shit. This bitch is two-faced as they come. But the fact that this woman knew about what had happened with this girl at Sephora stealing that information, the fact that the girl felt comfortable sharing the information with Sam in the first place speaks volumes, but the fact that they kept it hush-hush, I mean, that just, that speaks volumes, like I said, about who Sam is as a person. On top of that, Sam was a fucking bully. I mean, it's been proven many, 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 many times. And like John Cookie and she has a bad habit of sticking her own foot in her fucking mouth and getting her ass in trouble and exposing herself for being the bully she actually is. She claims she's not a bully, she claims she doesn't condone bullying, but then she does shit like this.
knowing damn well people are going to go after him and attack him and bully him and you don't say shit about it. So therefore you do condone bullying and you are a bully. So yeah, what do you guys think about everything that we talked about in tonight's video? Obviously it wasn't a spa night chit chat. We just kind of just had a little conversation here. I'm trying to stay awake for as long as I can because the Star Wars premiere is tonight at 11 p.m. and I would like to go to the first showing. Anyways, guys, I'm going to get on out of here, uh, take a shower, probably redo my hair color because as you can see, it's getting kind of faded. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already. And I will see you guys in my next video. I love you guys so, so much. Bye.